Namaste, my friend. Today we will talk about how, how we will understand how, the, how to apply the karma yoga anytime, anywhere, mentally and emotionally. You sent a message about that girl. Huh? You, you have a disliking for that girl. So that disliking lives in the mind. And nothing happens to that girl, but everything happens to me. I get upset every time I see that. So we, if we change mentally and emotionally inside us, the life is going to be better. So let us do some simple practice. Eyes are closed. Find out the best place for a shorter practice. Eyes are closed, most comfortable position. Looking at the neck joint and being aware, feeling the sensation, comfort and steadiness. Moving the mind on the shoulder joints, being there, feeling the sensation, comfort and steadiness. Move the mind on the hip joint. You're just becoming aware. So that awareness makes you knowing that if there is any discomfort and ease, so experience the sensation, comfort and steadiness. <clears throat> and now being carefree, free from all the cares of the mind. Cares of the mind? Mind cares. That crazy mind always cares through its past memory, imagination, monkey mind, that is what we are going to learn today. So when it cares through the monkey mind or biased mind or like and dislike mind, then we have a problem. So we say, let us watch it. Keep those thoughts at a bit. Let the thought come, let the thought go, and we are not the part of the Thought. thought is a part of the mind. We are not the thought. We are not the part of the thought. We are not the part of the mind. This is what we say, observer. The mind becomes an observer. <coughs> mind does not become the doer and the experiencer. It simply becomes the observer. And we'll go a little deeper. Move the mind on the skin of the head and the neck. Your mind is looking, so you are becoming more objective. So mind is looking at the skin of the head and the neck, you're separate from the head and the neck, and that gives us an experience of sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Moving the mind on the right arm, as if you are touching this, mind is touching the skin of the right arm from the shoulder to the fingertips and you experience sensation, relaxation and stillness.
mind looking at the left arm. So we are making the mind observer. We are not making the mind subjective. I am the left arm. No, here is the left arm. And then we experience sensation, relaxation, and stillness. The mind goes to the middle portion of the body, the chest in the front and the belly, and the spine at the back, the middle portion of the body, and experience, sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Moving the mind on the right leg, being there, feeling the sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Moving the mind on the left leg, sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Now, entire body, <coughs> from the top of the head to the toes, sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Now, look at the breath. Do not change the rate and the rhythm of the breath. When the breath goes in, count mentally in one, breath comes out, out one, in two, out two. Go on counting the breath. How long? Don't ask it. Keep on counting. And check that does the mind slips from the counting. It means the mind is not fully 100% with the practice. It is because that is what we are going to talk about. In the state of sensation, relaxation, and stillness in the body, you are looking at the breath, feeling the breath going in and out, in and out, and you are counting the breath. So you will know how many times the mind, <clears throat> with its past impression, takes us somewhere else. And that is a fair assessment of our mind, how many times the mind takes us away instead of the counting. In our sarvesham swastirbhavatu, we take our mind back to an objective, to objectivity. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu, Sarvesham swastir bhavatu, Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Not only chanting, but also knowing the meaning and extracting the knowledge out of it. Let everyone be happy. That is the meaning, but happiness, we have to remind ourselves in the midst of 
any like and dislike, stressed mind, cognitive biased mind, that happiness is our essential nature. We forget this. And then we start with the strong likes and dislikes, jealousy and hatred. Our today's topic, you know, I'm, I'm adding today's topic into this journey. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu. Sarvesham Shantir. May there be peace for all. So that peace which is our essential nature, is veiled by the mind looking outside, either through its biased mind, either through the like and dislike mind, either through the judgmental mind, either through the money mind, either through the monkey mind. Are you getting it? Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu, Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu, Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu, Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu. May there be completeness in all. Mind forgets that our real self is complete. Why it forgets? Because it believes I have a right for strong likes and dislikes. I have a right to react, anger and jealousy. That is why you forget. <laughs> sarvesham, Sarvesham, Mangalam Bhavatu, Sarvesham, Mangalam Bhavatu, Sarvesham, Mangalam Bhavatu, May there be auspiciousness for all. Can my mind think of an auspiciousness for all, blessing for all, grace for all, instead of strong likes and dislikes, instead of biased mind? Whatever the other person is, we don't worry about it. We don't care. We say, let you also be blessed. Let any, everyone be blessed. Why it does not happen? Because the mind takes over the strong likes and dislikes. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. And in that state, you are again looking at the breath. Om Shanti. Breath is going in. Om Shanti. Breath is coming out. Om Shanti. And find out. <coughs> The mind is not going anywhere. Mind is <coughs> dropping Om Shanti. And if the mind is dropping Om Shanti, it is not going anywhere. We have won the first step in the journey of Karma Yoga. Mind has to change inside. Now do not think, remain as you are. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Remain seated in that state of calmness and relaxation. Open your eyes. Pay attention. This is one of the most important lessons on Karma Yoga. The title of this lesson is Applying Karma Yoga Anytime, Anywhere, Mentally, Emotionally. You have not to do anything outside. Whatever you are doing, keep on doing. But internal change, the mental, emotional change has to come in that particular situation. 
how we think, speak, and act in our daily life, whatever our mind says, whatever our mind says, feels, and thinks. If mind feels, for example, I don't like you, you do not say outwardly, but your mind is upset because I am in front of you. And your mind already said that, huh, that I don't like you. So whatever I will do, your mind will associate and cause reaction, hesitation, anxiety in my mind. Are you getting it? So now just with a like and dislike mind, I am upset. And nothing happens to the other person whom I dislike. Because I'm not saying outwardly. Are you getting it? So it is happening in my mind. And that happening in the mind causes a lot of challenges in our life. So whatever master says, no situation, no, re no situation, no relation, no person, no time, no lo location has to do with my stressed mind. That I forget to understand. So every time you go to the office and you see that girl and mind changes its mood, it has a thought of disliking and nothing happens to that girl and you are just, you are getting upset. <clears throat> are you getting it? Pay attention to it. So if I'm a boy of mine, why you have to like and dislike? What I have to do with the like and dislike with anyone? Any situation, any relation, any person, any time. Because I make them subjective, means I make them me and mine. How I do not like, I hate that person. Now mine starts thinking, it will dig inside the mind and will bring all the negative feeling in my mind. Other, you know, the guy in front of me is enjoying. He's also respecting and he is respecting or she is respecting and you feel annoyed, more annoyed. Karma Yoga is to change that mindset, that attitude in the mind. What is that attitude in the mind? We have many attitudes, money mind, sheep mind, monkey mind, rationalized mind, cognitive biased mind, like and dislike mind, mood swing, depressed mind, grandiose mind, stress and angry mind, If we have these mind, then only we are disturbed. So that, that shapes the attitude, my attitude in the life, and then there is a problem. So why to purify the mind to get away with these crazy states of the mind? <clears throat> Purification means it should aspire for, it should desire for real self, peace, happiness, love, truth, and wisdom. So if the mind has turned into a money mind, it is a workaholism, neglecting health, relationship, integrity in relationship. I have a pursuit of the wealth uh, we have a devious financial, devious financial practices or using people for gain, addictive attachment to the money and the possessions at the cost of well-being. You told me about Amazon. You also told me about you applied for Social Security. But because the mind overpowers. So if I remember, this is the money mind, and the money mind can can take over me, sheep mind. Oh, the, the society is doing this, so I should also do it. No, I should examine. I should work in any situation. I should find out what is the best. 
I should verify the facts. I do not participate in harmful groups due to hard mentality, <coughs> lack of independent critical analysis on the important issues. You told me before, I did not talk about that in the beginning. No, no, I, I always love to go and for a drink. I have to ask myself whether I need a drink. No, I need a drink because I will meet them. So when you go and meet them, <coughs> and then your mind returns with the frustration. So it means I critically analyze, I need not to go there. Monkey mind. Difficulty focusing at work while driving, while doing anything, poor listening skills, and scattered thinking impairs my communication. These are the minds we change in karma yoga. Internally, mentally, you recognize them. Rationalizing the mind. What is the rationalizing the mind? I don't see the cause and effect. Why you dislike a girl? Is there any reason? No, there is no reason. So why you dislike? Or why you like? Forget about it. Keep your mind free. So we justify. We justify because of others' actions. And these different states of the mind prevents us to do the karma yoga, cognitive biased mind. <coughs> cognitive biased. So we have a biases, sense of our childhood, rushed, narrow judgments, people based on limited stereotypes, reactive political opinions, we are not uh, there, you know, we need not to react to any political opinion, not recognizing good ideas. So these are the biased minds. So I have to remember, recall, understand, and get rid of it. Stressed and angry mind. Verbally lashing out at loved ones due to irritation about unrelated issues. Making re reckless decisions while over overwhelmed, escapism into addictive behavior, likes and dislikes mind. That is also one type of the mind. <clears throat> you go outside, you say, I like this, and I dislike this. So your mind keeps on thinking, and it causes the attachment, and you keep on thinking about it, and it disturbs your mind. Peace. Mood swing mind. Depressed mind, grandiose mind, unrealistic, overconfidence resulting in financial ruin from the poor investment decisions, motivated by, so we have to be very, refusal to accept feedback or criticism, stunting personal growth. This is why we, we suffer. So take an example, the money mind, an executive manipulating the accounts to hide losses, resulting in imprisonment. A person becoming obsessed for riches, losing, caring families' connections. This is all because of the mental attitude, sheep mind, spreading rumors on social media, leading to a person's unfair public shaming. Or we just uh, spread the rumor when we meet our relations against any person. No, that is not our job. You maintain the poison cup. Monkey mind. A distracted mind. Rationalizing, justifying, overheating. Sometimes what we do, you know, we justify uh, overheating the unhealthy food, leading to obesity and disease. Cognitive biased mind. Cognitive biased mind means that uh, a hiring manager rejecting candidates based on gender stereotypes. Biased. <coughs> so I have that biased mind when I see and meet any person. So I have to get rid of this stressed and angry mind. 
we already know it. Depressed mind, grandiose. Specifically, karma yoga means that I have to sacrifice all these minds. The like and dislike mind, let me sacrifice it. Internally, mentally, you say, I sacrifice this like and dislike mind. I sacrifice cognitive bias mind. I sacrifice monkey mind. I sacrifice rationalized mind. I sacrificed bias mind. What happens? When you sacrifice means they're giving up. So when you're giving up in your mind, your mind is free. And the next moment, you are in peace and happiness. Are you getting it? Karma Yoga means that I change the attitude of the mind inside and then I express my behavior outside. Internal, it's more a mental and emotional. Karma Yoga, through the practices of selfless action, helps transform attitude in the in many ways. So now we have to understand that in Karma Yoga, we perform unselfish action. Well, how can I be unselfish in my life? So we have a different definition of selfish state of the mind unselfish state of the mind. Remember this all the time. So when we say you are selfish, you are doing selfish action, every selfish action has an element of likes and dislikes, attachment and detachment, hatred and jealousy. Unselfish, it is devoid of them. You look at the house and you give your opinion, your understanding. House is good. Whether you, it is beyond the likes and dislikes. So unselfish action means you minimize likes and dislikes. You told me that girl which you don't like. No, I'm just repeating again, again, reminding you. Next time when you go, Change your mind from the liking and disliking and meet her as a new person. And see what happens to your mind. So you minimize the likes and dislikes. You reduce the mood swing. You reduce the opinion that is burning in your mind. And then what happens? You are doing a karma yoga, nothing outside, not a person, situation or relationship can ever <clears throat> cause you stress. Are you getting it? I want to make it clear so that this week you are, <clears throat> you are understanding that first, first inside, first inside you change your attitude. Say if we are money-mindedness, our attitude should move towards generosity and ethical means of right livelihood. <coughs> I'm just explaining all the states of the mind. Against the herd mentality, the sheep mentality, I should use the discerning mind, questioning. I should question and evaluate independently inside my head. Against the monkey mind, I should gain the focus, mindfulness, and mental discipline. If my mind is monkey mind in a particular situation, tell everyone, then let me focus first, and then I will think about it, this issue. Against the rationalization, attitude of truthfulness, attitude of honesty, I should have the moral courage. That is our attitude towards the rationalized mind. So if I don't put this, these attitude, and I'm going to suffer, 
I am not doing karma yoga. That is our second step after understanding why we know that. You already know the real self is permanent peace and happiness. So why I cannot live in permanent peace and happiness? Because of the impurity in the mind. And that impurity in the mind that changes the attitude. And these are the attitude that changes. And then we forget. Against the cognitive biased mind, I should have a balance and equanimity in the mind. Balanced perspective. I should think before I speak. Against the mood swing, I should take my mind to a stability, a mental composer before I seek or speak anything. Against the despair, hope, optimism, faith in the order of the existence. Against the grandeur, grandiosity, I should have humility, self-reflection and readiness to learn from others. You are changing the mental attitude inside. And once you change the mental attitude, your behavior and your action, your expression will fit that situation, that relationship, that person. Why to change that attitude? <clears throat> Why to change that attitude? Now, if I have a strong likes and dislikes, let me continue with so when you continue with the strong likes and dislikes mind, it will cause the attachment and the time will come. It will create a hatred and jealousy. So your mind is constantly thinking about it. It will create a lot of impression. Why change of attitudes comes by thinking and reflecting the mind. So what our master says that when there is a like and dislike mind, biased mind, sheep mind, I have to think and reflect. I have to change that attitude internally. Nobody is noticing and you are changing. And I have a disliking for this guy and your mind says that let me get rid of this disliking. He or she is also a wonderful human being. What I have to do with the liking and disliking, you are thinking in your mind. And once that liking and disliking goes away, you express your relationship with that person. So what happens? Your mind is happy. I'm answering the question, why change of attitude comes by thinking and reflecting in the mind. If I do not think and reflect in the mind, these all different states of the mind is going to take over me. And that is what is happening because of the, and that is what results into the stress. Attitude have cognitive thought, attitude. Remember, attitude have a cognitive thought as, an, as well as an emotional component. Two, two things, emotional component and a cognitive thought. So by inten intentionally changing my thought and ideas, attitude shift. What I have to do with the likes and dislikes and biased mind and sheep mentality, mind, Calm down. <clears throat> You're not going there. So reflecting on the current attitude and benefits of more constructive ones creates motivation and willingness to change. So attitude. One is the cognitive thought and the thought is associated with the emotion. So when I start thinking what I have to do with the likes and dislikes, you know, everyone is a human being, I need not to worry about it. Questioning the long-haired assumption. I have a false assumption about others. I have to break that. It may be against Eric or it may be against David. Just break it. That break that long-haired assumption. They invite you over there as a mom and just you are full of energy, you go there, you play with them and come back. Just for a few hours. Why should I have biases and patterns? 
Are you getting it? Attitude. I have to change the attitude. Learning to recognize and dispute irrational or unhealthy attitude replaces them with realistic and helpful ones instead. Broadening vision through inspirational ideas. That is what I have been giving you. Teaching. Setting clear intention and affirmation focused on the new attitude. It reprograms our mind. Remember this. Again, I'm uh, reminding you, thought has come like and dislike. So thought of dislike and like has an, one is the thought, the other is the emotional content. Emotional content. So now I have nothing to do with the likes and dislikes. Everyone is a human being, wonderful human being. And that gives me the sense of humility. So the attitude and it, which has a thought and the emotional content. So your thought says, what I have to do with anyone? Oh, I have to go to Africa. Yeah, let us go there and play. My role as a mother. And you come back, you're free. You enjoy. They will also enjoy your attitude and your personality. Does it mean karma yoga is more emotional, mental than physical? Answer is yes. An interesting perspective, karma yoga have a strong emotional and mental component first. And then it converts into the physical action or my behavior. First, I have to cultivate the right attitude of detachment, of equanimity, of dropping my selfishness. I told you selfishness means <clears throat> mind works with all the different, different states of the mind that I discussed. So offering the fruits of the action. So I just become free everywhere. Go to your daughter, you go to your son, you go to your the office and you are full of energy. Why you are full of energy? You don't have those attitude of the mind, which I discussed before. You're maintaining the poise amid challenges encountered while selflessly serving. You have an emotional stability. Why the emotional st instability? It is because of those different uh, states of the mind. The hard mind, ah, I told you, the sheep mind, money mind, monkey mind, the like and dislike mind, and etc., etc. So you, you recognize, oh, this here is a thought and it gives me sheep mind. Let me drop it. Can I have a thought that goes beyond the sheep mind? You inculcate the thought, you think about it, and let us support, your emotion supports it. Then you go out in the society and express it, fine. So there is another problem comes, you know, how to change attitude against each one with examples. You should know. Against the money-mindedness, reflect on contentment that you are the lucky since your childhood and you have a sense of, you start thinking of the contentment. If there is a money-mindedness from a simple living over, chasing wealth for status. Reflect on non-material sources of meaning. So instantly, I'm just giving you some of the ideas that reflect on the impermanence of the wealth. I have to think about it. Can the money take me? Can the money goes with me to the cremation ground? Can the money buy happiness? Can the money buy peace? And when the mind says no, tell your mind, hold on, have a sense of contentment. Against the herd mentality, the sheep mentality. Analyze information independently. 
before forming views based on partition claims. Against the monkey mind, what you should do, train, focus. Uh, so when the mind is distracted, do nothing. Just keep on watching the mind until it returns within you start feeling the calmness, then only you take a decision. Don't take a decision with a monkey mind. Sometimes we rationalize and we rationalize. So we rationalize without any reason, cause and effect. So I have to go back and rethink and reflect. Admit weakness and error however painful, rather than justifying. Let us admit uncomfortable truth, because I have to evolve myself. I have to uh, perfect the karma yoga against the cognitive biases. Listen emphatically to opposing ideologies instead of attacking the viewpoint. Because if I'm attacking, that mind is selfish. Selfish mind is caused by the likes and dislikes, attachment and detachment. Second step is wonderful step. That is what we say, the karma yoga. Instantly you think inside where your thinking changes the emotional content and the emotional content now is free, uh, living into peace and happiness. So first is to recognize Sometimes we have a thought of the money mind. So I have to re reflect on the impermanence before acting greedily. And then you check what way, what I can offer or donate something to the people. You are changing the entire attitude of the mind. The money mind wants to grab it, wants to become a consumer. You become a contributor. Sheep mind. Verify information before circulating further. Think independently before supporting groups. You rightly did. I remember you told me, you wrote to me that He was asking about the Versa and you did not speak. That is the best thing. We should all. Versa is wonderful. You are also wonderful. <laughs> You're not at all concerned. So we do not enter into the sheep mentality, the monkey mind, the single task using to-do list. Rationalizing mind, admit mistakes and lapses with the courage to improve our integrity. So you change the thought and then you reflect on it so that the emotional content also changes the stressed mind. The moment you have a stressed mind, the first thing that you go into the practice, let me relax. Now tell the mind, are you relaxed? Yes, I'm relaxed. Why did you have the stress? And when you start examining why did you have the stress, you will find out it is because of these different states of the mind. Like and dislikes mind. When the preferences outweighs the principles, pause, reflect in reverse, unfair judgments made in a reactive mode. Mood swing mind. Establish stable routine, daily practice. Daily listening will help you change your attitude in the mind. Depressed mind. Profe depressed mind. We are already getting out of it. So we are understanding what needs to be done. The first step, we understand the real self is eternal, permanent, peace, happiness, love, truth, and wisdom.
it is the mind started running outside. A sense for forgetfulness is causing these challenges. So a sense of forgetfulness means I have these different states of the mind during the day. That is what we say the forgetfulness. So my, my attitude has changed due to habitual, animal, impulsive nature. And that is where the karma yoga comes. I think of it. I can think at any time. when the mind is selfish. I told you, selfish means likes, dislikes, reaction, anger, hesitation, attachment, detachment. That is selfish mind. So when our mind gets clouded by these negative emotions, our actions reflect this inner turmoil outside also, propagating further unskillful states in our day-to-day -day life, in our behavior. So I have to be proactive, purifying our mind through the karma yoga. So you can just remember the principle of inner manifesting the outer. What is inside you is going to manifest outside. And what is inside in terms of the thought, which has an emotional content, it, if I change it, I change the entire landscape of the mind. And I'm happy. Are you getting it? Principle of wise motive. So if I keep on thinking with unselfishness, so I have a... Mm, I have a positive motivation all the time. Otherwise, what happens? You are drinking a cup of coffee, sitting in your backyard, and the mind keeps on thinking about those selfish motivation. Whatever you have liked and disliked and attached, those thought returns, and they return with an emotional content, and it causes you the problem. I have to make a principle of conscious choice. We can consciously cultivate the skill. You wake up in the morning. I have to check what my mind is saying. And if the mind is going to the impurity, I have to shift it by thinking inside and changing the emotional content. It has a principle of ripple effect. You are doing it every day, every night every day for a couple of days. And you see, the, the, the selfish mind always wants to create a disharmony, anxiety, duality. So you think principle of harmony. That is what the Karma Yoga is. So what it means, the karma yoga means that I act, I behave out of the mental clarity and peace 24 by 7. <clears throat> the time will come. My mind will stop blaming external situations for our emotional reactions. But peace and happiness originate inwardly, independent of the changing circumstances. You have a greater realization. So by stilling our restless mind through presence and detachment, we gain the clarity needed to act rightly, regardless of condition. Karma Yoga starts with the mindset we bring to action. When thoughts harbor selfishness, means the jealousy, hatred, strong likes and dislikes, egoism, 
actions. So my emotional nature also becomes like that. And they are harmful. So by contrast, when we cultivate mental clarity, equilibrium in all condition, and detachment from anxiety producing desire, our deeds naturally align with the truth and ethics. Equanimity takes over into your mind. And every day you wake up in the morning in peace and happiness. Every day you retire to the bed in peace and happiness. Days after days, weeks after weeks. So Karma Yoga is basically a mental mastery of the thought. First the thought. So if you have a positive thought, and then you have to positive thought as a positive emotion. Karma Yoga in daily life. That is what we need to Awakening, spiritual consciousness, you do not need to go to the Himalayas or you do not to leave the society. It is you change your inner mental attitude. Attitude has two components, the thought with the associated emotion. So that is how our masters talk about selfless action versus selfish action. So again, make it be very, be very clear. The selfish action means that thought comes associated with an emotion, has a content of attachment, detachment, jealousy, hatred, likes, dislikes, frustration, mood swing, and the unselfish action says, oh, I have to act with you. I have to give you a lesson. Let me give you a lesson in peace and happiness. So anytime any thought enters into your mind, you become aware, you examine if it is selfish, change it to unselfish, and you see the life changes. Principle of open receptivity. Your mind is open. Each action should be approached with openness and humility that is free of prejudgment for it to reveal deeper lessons. Each situation you are going to, Eric or David or daughter or your office, you think of open receptivity, unselfishness, principle of wholehearted sincerity. Once I start giving you a lesson, I'm totally focused. Principle of mindful engagement. But if you follow all those, I'm giving a very hard word and all the hard words are explained in the beginning of a lesson. Principle of purposeful, principle of purpose over practice. So I have a purpose that let me give you peace and happiness. You have only one motivation. Let me think, speak, and act in peace and happiness instead of I should think, speak, and act out of likes and dislikes, out of bias, cognitive bias mind, out of the sheep mentality. <clears throat> Your motivation is that. So once your motivation is that what happens, you continue to think, speak, and act in the world with clarity, with peace and happiness all the time. That is the, that is the goal of karma yoga. So you develop an equanimity. You develop an equanimity. You experience that sense of the calmness deep inside your mind. <clears throat> 
you have a composer all the time. And that will attract more and more people towards you. Not only the composer, because now the attitude in the mind has changed from selfish to unselfish. So you have the state of the calmness all the time. Because you have recognized why and how. <coughs> why and how. Reactive, agitated states of the mind is causing the trouble. Attitude means thought associated with the emotion. So I have a thought of selfishness associated with the negative emotion. You're thinking, you're making a coffee in your kitchen and the mind suddenly enters into a thought of bias or thought of likes and dislikes. Instantly you restart thinking of what I have to do with the likes and dislikes. Let me think good. So you are acting from the inner wisdom rather than outcome. Normally, when we have a selfish action, I told you selfish attitude with the emotional content, we are always frustrated. And when you have unselfish action and selfish attitude in the mind and it is translated into action outside, you're always calm, relaxed. So instead, because when you when you say I like this or I like dislike this, mind is turned outward. But that mind is not able to see your liking and dislike has created a biased mind with emotions, and that is continue to multiply. Are you getting it? Now you don't have that mind principle. Simple principle. I have to change my mind first by thinking, associate emotions that let me think good of you. What I have to do with biases. So that becomes an unselfish mind. So it is basically when we say the bi uh, uh, selfish uh, Action means that it is a bind because of the binding desire. Binding desire means that the moment I have a like, dislike, biased mind, all those states of the mind, it is going to create a binding action. Binding action means that I will refer those actions, look at this guy, how he is behaving or misbehaving. My mind will continue to think of outer actions and that will disturb my life. Karma yoga means that I change my attitude inside completely. How to change that attitude? By thinking, associate with the emotion. Associate, you know, I have to give you peace and happiness. I associate that. Principle of equanimity, principle of calmness. What you are, you are the most wonderful person. How much time it takes you to say that you are the most wonderful person. And then I see that what are those traits you have? You have a sense of humility, you have a sense of givingness, you have a sense of clarity, you have a sense of composer to the David. Why shouldn't I look at those good qualities? Why? Because then my mind will be unselfish. <laughs> 